thank you for coming to my talk, or rather watching my talk. I'm here to talk about usability and accessibility pro tips for games user research lab design, which is a little on the nose. It's very meta, right, to talk about the places where we do user research at a user research summit. Um, but I'll explain a little bit more and provide context for that later. I am Dr. Ashley Brown, and I am a professor at the University of Utah, where, surprisingly, I run a user research lab. Uh, so today I'd like to talk to you about a few things. First, I'd like to do an introduction to me so you can figure out who I am, and then an introduction to my lab, which is what this whole presentation essentially is about. And then I'm going to talk about the methods I used to uh, design my lab, which was a survey. Well, I'm going to talk about the results of that survey, and then we're going to come up with this heuristic list of good design principles for accessibility and usability in a lab. And lastly, I'll go through some conclusions so that if you are ever in a position where you get to design your own user research lab, which is an amazing position to be in, um, that you have some pro tips to guide you along the way. I want to note that a lot of us will never be in that position, right? We'll never just be given a sum of money and uh, a space and said, do what you want, right? Usually we're moving into a building that has pre-allocated space or we're given, you know, recycled furniture or what have you. But I think these principles for accessible physical space design are uh, able to transfer over. So if you have a chair in your lab that breaks, and you have an opportunity to purchase a new chair, what are some things to keep in mind? So that chair can be accessible for as many playtesters as possible. That's the kind of stuff that we're gonna go over in this presentation. So let's introduce you to me. Who am I? Who am I? Uh, I teach at the University of Utah at Entertainment Arts and Engineering, where I teach design and of course, games user research. My name might look familiar, Ashley Brown, because I may have begged you for money in the past. I've had the pleasure to serve on the steering committee uh, and, and summit steering committee for the IGDA Games User Research and Experience SIG for a few years. Um, no longer, I've gracefully retired, but I uh, was fundraising lead for a couple years, so I, I knocked on a lot of doors and, and begged for, for money. <laughs> So that might be why I'm familiar. Oh, what a legacy. Um, and most importantly, this is my lab. Uh, I have very limited pictures of the lab. I'm gonna show you, show you the lab here in a minute um, because funnily enough, the last time I was there, I didn't think that was gonna be the last time I would be there because of COVID. So I actually haven't been to the lab in quite a few, few months, but let's take a look at the, the pictures I was able to find on an old hard drive anyway. So my lab is based at the University of Utah. We are lucky enough to have a campus that looks like this, which is amazing. And uh, I'm no geographer, but I'm pretty sure my lab is in this general direction, it seems like. Uh, you are here, right? So the lab came out of me starting at Entertainment Arts and Engineering in 2016 and uh, advocating for a user research lab. I was able to secure funding thanks to Activision, the College of Engineering, and the Center for Teaching Excellence at the university to get enough money to build the lab, which is really exciting. Um, and the lab itself is located right underneath my office, which is really convenient and really nice. Uh, but it's an old law library building. So the basement had all sorts of I mean, it was a library, right? So bookshelves and, and all sorts of stuff. I actually am not quite sure what the lab space originally was, but I was I was given this nice little little room um, to work with. And so in the summer of 2019, I think it was July, it was very hot out, uh, with the help of jo Josh Marchand, who is my lab manager, who's now at Paradox, we uh, unloaded a load of boxes and made a user research lab in what was prob probably um, a former room closet of sorts. So this is the room we, we were given to work with. When I was given this room, I actually reached out to you all with the survey, more details on that later, um, because I, I was given this room and, and the grant funding that I had to turn it into a user research lab, which is a total dream, 
but also a lot of responsibility, right? How do you turn this gray box room with nasty old carpet into something that's accessible and fun and that people want to spend time in and want to play games in? So we uh, did some upgrades after your feedback in the survey. Um, we did a really fun carpet pattern of our little copyright free space alien. Uh, and then uh, got the equipment and students in to play test games. On the room's kind of like an L shape. So in the little like L alcove, we have a console testing area with a sofa and bean bags and a giant TV. And then on the other side, we have three play testing stations. Um, there's my colleague, Kay Bolson, play testing a student game. Um, and then we have a moderator station. And who's, who's this? Who's this person that's so familiar to us all? Uh, <laughs> the moderator station actually at this point wasn't even set up yet. We didn't have any of the computers, but there's uh, Elizabeth Zelly looking, looking very much like a boss. Um, and as you can tell, we're still under construction with, with the background. And uh, this is the outside of the building. And who's that? That looks like a Jordan Lynn. Look at that. So the reason, uh, and I did get everyone's consent to feature these fine people in, in the presentation, the reason I'm, I'm humble bragging um, about how lucky I am to have friends that visit the lab is to invite all of you. If you want to come see this lab for yourself uh, in non-pandemic times, please reach out. I would love to have you. It means a lot to me and the students anytime we have someone from industry come in and tour the lab and see what we do. So get in touch. We'd love to have you there. Now let's talk about how we designed the lab to look the way it does. I ran a survey. <laughs> it's the most overused method, right? Surprise, surprise. Um, so in April 2019, when I knew I would spend the summer designing and making the lab, uh, I decided to run a survey that asked students, faculty, staff, and you all, exciting, if this looks familiar, maybe you took the survey, hopefully, um, what types of furniture I should get. Mostly I was using the survey because I'm, I'm terrible at interior design and decorating. I'm quite awful at it, to be honest. Um, but what ended up happening is I caught a lot of really good anonymous feedback from this survey about a ton of things that I hadn't considered. The survey itself was open for two weeks, and the aim of the survey was to assess the style of lab furniture that the, the lab should have. Um, the technology was already purchased and I was walked into that. I couldn't get the towers that we didn't already have at the university. So I didn't ask any questions about tech. Likewise, the monitors, the eye tracking and face tracking software, all of that had already been purchased with grant money. So the survey didn't ask about any of those things. Um, likewise, we have a separate room to test virtual reality in. So the, the survey also did not ask anything about virtual reality. I then analyzed the survey results um, based on frequency of term. So I'm going to show you what the survey questions look like in a second. But the results you see here that led into this list of pro tips for designing uh, games user research laboratories came out of looking at your written responses and looking at the frequency of terms that were used. I then organized those terms into this itemized list and then used that list to uh, show you the data today. The graph that you see on this slide represent the frequency of terms in those open-ended responses. So for example, here at 14 um, is comfortable. So the term comfortable appeared 14 times across the data set. It was the most frequent used term uh, when describing ideal characteristics of furniture followed by storage, followed by light, so on and so forth. So this graph is a little difficult to read because PowerPoint hates me, <laughs> um, but I have the data there. It's, I, I can go through more detail if you are curious in the q and I just wanted to briefly show that. So what did the survey look like? The survey contained 10 multiple choice questions with nine optional short answer sections to explain answers. The multiple choice questions contained reference pictures of pieces of furniture to get, indicate the style of potential furniture I was considering purchasing for the lab. 
I took all these images from Ikea. Hey, shout out to Ikea. <laughs> um, because uh, Ikea has easily findable styles, right? Um, I actually had no intention of purchasing the furniture from Ikea for, for no political reasons or anything, just convenience sake. Um, but the furniture itself at Ikea is standard enough that if I found a style or design I really liked, I could probably find that style or design anywhere. So um, I hadn't locked down a vendor at that point, so I just used Ikea. I did this for the moderation desks, for participant desks, for the sofas, for the coffee tables, for the color of paint in the room, for uh, blinds and shutters, literally everything that I needed to buy for the lab went into the survey. So let's talk about the results. Here's a breakdown of who responded. I had a total of 49 participants. The majority of these participants, as you can see in this chart, 41% were students. 25% were you. Thank you so much for taking the survey, those of you who did. 8% uh, were game dev professionals and other areas other than user research. Um, and 8% were other. Uh, I had one respondent identify as otherworldly and vaguely terrifying. So I kept that in, right? I mean, I'm not going to tell them they're not otherworldly and vaguely terrifying. Why not? Uh, and then 18% were faculty, with one faculty respondent noting that they were not employed by the University of Utah or Entertainment Arts and Engineering, that they came from a different institution. So thanks, external faculty member. So um, from what you said, the furniture people selected was fine. I mean, that was interesting data. That wasn't nearly as interesting, though, as why people selected the furniture they did. But in case you were curious, in case you're a, a furniture hobbyist and you really wanted to see all the different pieces of furniture um, that were selected, these were the results. Uh, as you can tell, I didn't actually purchase any of these. <laughs> as I showed you pictures of my lab, you're like, hey, none of this is familiar. Yeah, I ended up going with different stuff anyway, but okay. <laughs> Um, so those optional short answers were absolute gold mines for accessibility and usability pro tips that honestly I wish I had known when I was buying furniture for my house because y'all are really smart. So experts discussed practicalities I hadn't considered like cleanliness, washability, movability, and how to account for different sizes and abilities of play testers. I took these responses, boiled them down into that chart you saw earlier, and into this heuristic checklist for lab building that I created. So one of the reviewers, not to, not to dunk on reviewer number two, but one of the reviewers um, really dreaded the word heuristic and, and didn't approve of me using the word heuristic. So I just wanted to take a minute, tell my side of the story, no, I'm kidding. Um, the reason I use the word heuristic here is because on usability.gov, heuristic evaluations are defined as an expert review um, according to accepted usability principles of how, uh, how accessible or usable a site or game or game user research lab is. Also, did you know there's a usability.gov? <laughs> we have official government website in the United States for improving the user experience, and I honestly had no idea until I um, was doing something for one of my classes. But, but anyway, so I'm using the term heuristic in this sense. Uh, do we have a design list for what makes for a good user research lab? I couldn't find one. So I know there are um, lists for building design and for room design and even for furniture design, but specifically for the purposes of user research labs, I could not find a list of things to keep in mind. So I decided to make my own. And this is that list. <laughs> I will go through each of these in detail, but boil down what you all said, user research lab furniture should be easy to clean, plain and comfortable, be neutral or muted colors, always storage, 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 wires and cords are the enemy, they must be stopped, and if you can have options which are adjustable, that is best, 
And wheels were actually really contentious. So we'll talk about wheels. Some people loved wheels. Some people hated wheels on furniture. We'll talk about it. So the first heuristic is, uh, or pro tip if you like, if you don't like me using the word heuristic, pro tip, is uh, the ability to clean surfaces. So when buying lab furniture, prioritize the ability to clean that furniture. So the ability to clean surfaces between testers was denoted as high priority, wipeable surfaces, scotch guard, and washable fabrics were all mentioned as being key to the longevity of lab furniture. This is pre-pandemic too, so we're, we're always concerned about cleanliness here. Um, as an example, the 13th response to the couch question said, uh, none of these couches look like they can be wiped down or cleaned all that well. Faux leather or pet-proof fabric treatments are easier to clean and less likely to get destroyed by playtesters. Uh, likewise, response three said, Scotch guard all the fabrics, <laughs> which I, I love that. I, I want that on a t-shirt. <laughs> um, for the pro tip, plain but comfortable. Seated furniture recommendations generally took this plain but comfortable stance, as respondents noted that comfortable furniture is key for lengthy play sessions and distractions from the game should be kept to a minimum. For example, the 12th response said that uh, you need something as comfortable as possible with plenty of space in case you test with two people. Ideally, not too distracting in terms of colors, material that makes noise, etc. You want the participant to forget about the furniture and pretend they are at home or at least at a good friend's place, which is really helpful. Um, a lot of the furniture we have in our building and around our section of the university tends to be very playful, very brightly colored, and uh, that's not necessarily what you want. Your house, well, I don't know. I'm not going to make assumptions, but I like this point that you want to, your participant to feel like they're at a friend's house or their home playing to eliminate all the distractions that might bias your data. So don't pick loud colors, pick something that's plain and that's gonna be comfortable for long play test sessions. Pro tip number three, neutral muted colors. This goes hand in hand with the last one. Um, the survey provided a lot of color options as, as we discussed and respondents reported that neutral or muted colors were preferred. Uh, so response seven to the sofa question said that yellow is sort of an abrasive color for a testing space, um, but the, the couch shape made the most sense. If they have that in a more neutral tone, that would be good. And then the first response to the question about paint color said, I would normally say hashtag on brand red, which is the University of Utah red color. Um, but it's not a great color for a lab environment. Uh, even the orange, Mount, I had Dorito orange and Mountain Dew <laughs> yellow, partially as jokes. I put those up as joke paint colors to see if anyone would buy it, but, but people <laughs> had very stern words to say about my, my troll options. Um, even the orange I voted for should probably be less intense. Labs should be somewhat bland and boring so that the focus of attention is on the game, not where they are. This is fantastic advice, right? Especially when, if you're given a budget and you're thinking pie in the sky, what would I want my ideal user research lab? Um, I found it very easy to get carried away and to think of all these cool, playful things, but R1 is right. <laughs> um, that would be distracting from the game. And that's not what we're there to do. At the end of the day, we're there to play test games. Storage, storage, storage. Um, storage is apparently a really important and hard to come by in Gur Labs, <laughs> I learned. From, from you all, from your responses. Having a place to keep things out of sight and the desk tidy is important if it's in the same room as the test stations. Storage space in a lab is always at a premium. Take advantage of the TV stand to store spare cables, gratuities, etc. And I like the idea of having storage space where you can hide things. So these are all quotes from participants that add context to why storage is important. Point number five, wires and cables are the enemy. So similar to comments about choosing neutral or muted colors, participants also talked about the importance of keeping wires and cables tidy so as they aren't distracting or a health and safety risk. So some example quotes for this item are, uh, this particular um, item has more storage space. 
I generally advise against open storage since you will want something with a cleaner look that will hide messy backup cables, forms, cleaning products, etc. And uh, side tables are probably better than a coffee table because it's less likely that a stray cable or player movement will knock something off of it. But beware folding joints because those can eat cables, <laughs> which is really good. When you're sitting there planning out your furniture, right, you're not often thinking about the practicalities of cable management and of uh, getting cables stuck in furniture. So again, brought my design ideas down to earth. Point number six, adjustable is best. Being able to modify or reconfigure lab equipment to support player needs was flagged as highly desirable. Pro tips like throw pillows, standing desks, and removable armrests were recommended as they allow for multiple setups to meet player needs. So some uh, example quotes from this. This one actually has completely changed my life. Um, this participant said, make sure you have some throw pillows to allow people to pad their lower back or arms. For example, I have carpal tunnel syndrome and need a lot of pillows under my elbows when I game. Uh, I tried that out myself. I was getting um, some nerve pain in my arm, in my mouse arm. And so I tried putting a cushion there and it works wonders. So thank you, this improved my life. Uh, and, and I did buy throw pillows for the research lab, something I hadn't considered before. Um, you absolutely want something as ergonomic as possible to accommodate different body types and shapes and sizes. So having adjustable furniture, like having chairs with removable arms or having um, chairs, office chairs without arms, helps for uh, larger body types to fit comfortably in the chair. Um, and so these are like small details. The next time you go to replace a office chair for play testers or for moderators, or the next time you go to uh, update some furniture, think about throwing a cushion onto the order. They're fairly inexpensive and it makes for a much more comfortable play test. And also thinking, think about having chairs without arms to uh, support different sized players. And also thinking, think about chairs which feature adjustability. So not only just height, but also tilting back and forth. Think about standing desks. I mean, the dream, right? If only we could all afford standing desks for every play test uh, station, that would be amazing. Um, but keep in mind, the more adjustable and the more ergonomic, the better. Okay, last one, wheels, the controversial wheels. So wheels were seen as a liability in which players could injure themselves or your equipment due to increased mobility and the invitation to wiggle and spin. I mean, I'm guilty of this as well, right? <laughs> but two participants also mentioned wheels as a benefit if you need to move or switch out furniture. So for VR testing, you want no wheels. For testing with kids, you want no wheels and no swivel. For broader accessibility, having an option with no arms are better. For long-term tests, comfort is paramount. Um, on the other side, get a desk with wheels in case the university decides to move you. <laughs> oh, when I read this comment, I thought this came from a professor. <laughs> this came from someone who's been moved, yeah. That's relatable. <laughs> um, so ultimately, the chairs I got for playtesting did have wheels. The desk did not. Um, but the wheels have the ability to lock so that there's a little bit of flexibility in case. It's kind of the best of both worlds, right? So if you need to move the chairs, you can. Um, if you need stability, to prevent motion sickness in play testers, especially if they're testing VR, you can lock the wheels down. I went for like kind of a hybrid, given that the the advice you all gave me was a bit, good points on either side, we'll say. All right, so some conclusions. Um, here's a good list to, to remind yourself all on one page. If you are building an accessible lab or if you have new furniture, a budget for new furniture purchasing, or if you have something break and you have to replace it, here are some pro tips to keep in mind when you are looking for furniture. Um, think clean, wipeable is always best, especially in pandemic and post-pandemic times. Go for plain but comfortable, go for neutral muted colors, storage, storage is a godsend, 
Uh, think about cable management, which is the least fun thing to think about, but really important. And pick furniture that is adjustable so you can accommodate as many playtesters as possible. Uh, and then, you know, you're going to have to have a conversation with yourself about how you feel wheels or no wheels fit in with your lab. That is all from me. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for listening. I am easy to reach on email at ashley at eae.utah.edu. You can also catch me on Twitch. I Twitch stream some of my classes, at least when we're working from home and teaching from home. Uh, you can also tweet at me at GamerGirl or find me on Instagram with more, more doggo pictures uh, at GamerAshley. So uh, feel free to reach out. I would love to talk to you about your labs and your lab furniture and any questions that you might have. Uh, yeah, thank you. Bye.